Very nice. All right, welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful October evening. I'm out just doing regular dog trainer stuff. I've been mowing and weed eating and using the blower. And, uh, you know, while I was doing that, I was trying to keep all these dogs like pretty copacetic, you know. And it got me to thinking about this email that I got the other day. A fella emailed me and he shared a link to a podcast. And on this podcast, uh, some dog trainers were talking about my YouTube channel. And all in all, they were being very complimentary. A guy was saying, you know, this uh, fella in Kentucky, he's got a good channel. He walks around, does a lot of fun stuff with the dogs. But in his opinion, my channel is very boring, you know. And so the fella asked me, he said, Stoney, does that hurt your feelings that people think your channel is boring? And I thought about it for a minute. And uh, the truth is, no. Guys, I get up every day and pray that I get to have a boring day. Because if something is exciting around here, then things have went wrong. And let me, I mean, let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about from a day-to-day -day perspective. Like, see this little dog here, right? Okay, so this dog here, we had to take her to the vet today. She has, well, here, I got the paperwork with me so I don't mess it up. She has immune-mediated hemolytic anemia, okay? That's just a bunch of fancy words for sometimes her body attacks its own red blood cells, right? And then she doesn't get enough oxygen, and it can be a real big you know, problem, okay? So, like, that's the kind of stuff that I have to manage every day. You know, she's also afraid of the blower, <laughs> and she's afraid of the mower, <laughs> and she kind of has bad manners and jumps on people. And I have a lot of people that come down to my kennel that are a little bit older, you know? And so if this dog goes to barking at them and goes to jumping on them, yes, I'm going to have a little excitement in my day. Uh, but that excitement is not going to be the kind of excitement that, you know, <laughs> makes me happy. All right. Now, you know, to make my channel more exciting, you know, I guess uh, I could get some dogs down here and I could pretend that they were going to bite me and then I could strangle them with this leash. You know, I mean, like say this dog here is giving me a lot of trouble. Maybe if I picked her up and strangled her a little bit, you know, it'd look a little bit more exciting. But again, that's not the kind of excitement that a you know, dog trainer wants to see during the day. And so, you know, what we're doing is we're trying to plug these dogs into a system, you know. I come out here and I want to make sure that these dogs are able to navigate, you know, the kind of situations that they find themselves in in real life. And like a lot of the stuff, like look, I'm trying to get this little dog to turn around on this block, just kind of a little body awareness exercise. And we do this periodically throughout the day over and over and over again. And no, I mean, it's not very exciting, you know. But the not exciting stuff, you put that work in and it pays off over time, you know. And you can make a big difference in your dog's life just by being that steady rock, you know, letting the dog know that like every day you're gonna be there and you can be counted on to be the same every day. One of the biggest problems that I see in dog training, I call it the red wine and Xanax problem, you know. People are emotionally all over the board with their dogs. So, you know, if they had a hard day at work and they come in, they're kind of quick tempered, you know, and after a little bit of red wine and Xanax, maybe they're not so quick tempered uh, and they, you know, then they're a little bit too permissive, okay? Well, dogs don't need that. If you'll notice, see how this dog jumped up on this table and this little dog had a hard time? Okay, let me show you why this little dog has a hard time. Oh, when this dog was a baby, she, well, come on, nerds, watch out. When this dog was a baby, <laughs> This is, this is the excitement that a dog trainer is trying to get away from, right? And when this dog was a baby, uh, she, su she suffered a severe compound fracture to her leg. And now, it, you know, it healed, but it didn't heal right. And she has, you know, very limited range of motion in her leg. And so when she's running, she kind of kicks it out, right? Okay, and then when she's sitting, see how, see how this leg, let me point her towards you. See how that leg... Uh, <laughs> See how this leg kind of points out? She can't tuck her leg up under her. Well, you can imagine from my perspective, I'm worried about this all day. 
she's you know out here in the yard with the other dogs and she's sitting there with her leg kind of cocked out like that well what if one of those big dogs runs over there and accidentally steps on her leg well yeah i mean that's going to be exciting but is that going to be you know good for the dogs it's going to be good for my day you know uh <laughs> this dog can be a little exciting she thinks she needs to be in every video ever made you know okay but look Talk about this. This is going to be some boring work because I'm trying to teach this dog how to navigate these obstacles basically with three legs. Nothing exciting about this, okay? But this is the work that makes a big difference. It's the boring stuff that you do every day over and over and over again. You pick a system and you learn to implement that system with persistence and consistency. And that steady work is what allows you to make, you know, progress with the dog it's what allows you to guarantee that the dog is going to be able to realize you know its full potential and the dog's potential is going to vary from dog to dog but it's not for me to judge okay you know if a dog comes here and it's got a little it's got an injury well we're going to make this dog's life the best that we can make it you know if a dog comes here and it's perfectly healthy and it's a you know good worker pretty athletic pretty smart like this little dog here you know we're going to make sure that this dog has a chance to you know live her best life too these dogs they're different if this dog didn't have a broken leg she would be super athletic okay so she her mind is the same as this dog's mind she wants to do all the same stuff and it's my job to try to kind of level the playing field a little bit and make sure that we can include the dogs, okay, that can't do the exciting stuff. When we go on hikes, we're having to, you know, we're having to kind of adjust our hiking schedule based on Lily's ability to keep up, you know. When we're hiking, a lot of times, she'll just kind of go off and take a little nap and we'll continue hiking and pick her up on our second and third loop. You know, a lot of times she'll want to do something and I just have to give her a helping hand. I have to put her up here. You know, is that exciting? No, you know, but it's rewarding, you know. It's rewarding to watch her struggle like that, okay, but gain the confidence to struggle and not fear failure, you know. Is, 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 is it boring? I mean, yeah, I guess, like, you know, if you're wanting to see dogs fight, you know, if you're wanting to see dogs pretend like they're going to bite somebody and then, you know, you pick them up in the air and strangle them, I mean, I guess that's exciting. It's not really exciting for me because, like, it's all fake, you know. If I thought I had a dog that was going to bite me, I'd put it on a back tie. How's it going to bite me? I mean, it's just dumb stuff, you know. So we get back to work, and we just do what we have to do. You know, here, I'll show you another kind of thing that's, you know, exciting in the dog business but not very good. Lily, come on. Okay, so reason number 560 of why I don't want to see anything exciting in the dog business. Come on, got a nice young dog here. Oh my gosh, come up here nerd. Got a nice young dog, very excitable. Okay, uh, she belongs to some uh, kind of some older people who, you know, haven't been able to get this kind of dog out and like get her the kind of exercise and, and early training that she needs. So she comes here, she starts having a pretty good time. And then I notice she has a lipoma, right? Okay, look at this. Now this probably isn't gonna be anything over the course of time, you know, but it's something that really can, can kind of really bum an owner out. So I've got to send that email later, right? I guess that's kind of exciting, you know? So uh, I guess the whole point I was wanting to make in this video is yes i do make boring vi uh, videos right okay but guys when you're going to an expert when you're going somewhere where like the person doing the work's demeanor is going to dictate the long-term progress and outcome of what they're being paid to do you kind of want the boring guy you want the guy that doesn't have any surprises, that doesn't find himself behind the, the eight ball. So, you know, for something exciting to happen, something had to go wrong. If I go get brain surgery, I don't want exciting brain surgery. If I go get heart surgery, I don't want exciting heart surgery. What I want is I want somebody with a steady hand and I want somebody with a calm demeanor that can help me make the type of decisions that are gonna allow me to maximize whatever time that I have to spend here on this earth. You know, and that's what I try to do with every one of these dogs. 
and every one of these dog owners, you know. And so if, uh, if people think I'm a little bit boring, I'm okay with that and stay there because, you know, I'm out here putting in steady work, weed eating, mowing, mopping, trimming trees, you know. I'm doing all the kind of stuff that you have to do to be successful. And no, it's not gonna get me a million views, but what it is gonna get me is it's gonna get me, you know, like respect and the acknowledgement that I'm out here putting in the kind of work that can be counted on. All right, so uh, for the fellow that sent me that uh, podcast, thanks for sending it to me. And uh, no, it doesn't hurt my feeling that people think that I'm boring. And for any of you that stayed in this video long enough, uh, you know, to get past the boring points, I thank you, you know, for, for patronizing our channel because we really appreciate that feedback and that's what keeps us motivated to make more content. All right, I'll see you guys next week.